Hey everybody, in the last video we set up our tunes ready and warped for uh, DJing inside of Ableton. And in this video what we're going to do is we're going to set up our EQs and we could even set up some filters. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we can select deck 1 and then we can come over to audio effects and we can see that Ableton's got an EQ3. So we can pop that EQ3 onto deck 1 and we can press stop so nothing's playing and um, what EQ3 does is if we start this tune and if we play it um, let's just play it from the beginning so on EQ3 we can take all the bass out we can take the mids out or we can take the high out so if you're familiar with DJing, um, that is typically the three EQs that you almost always have on a mixing console. So we've got that inside of Ableton. So what we're able to do, um, now you could have an audio interface uh, like this one, um, where I have two sets of outputs. I would have one and two and three and four. And what I could do with that is I could send this first deck in Ableton into one channel on the mixer. And then I could send the second deck into another channel on the mixer. Excuse me. And then I could use the mixer to actually mix them together with the EQ cuts and stuff. <gasps> Excuse me. So that's one way you could do it. If you had an audio interface that had two sets of outputs, what I'm doing is I'm going to do all the mixing internally inside of Ableton and then I just send one signal into the mixer. Cool. Um, so we're going to set up our EQs inside of Ableton and I'm going to use my APC40 and I'm going to do this in a strange way uh, and this is the way that I do it and it's not the way that I'd recommend other people do it because people look at me and kind of think it's a bit odd and it is a bit odd. Um, but what I do is I map my low to a fader, I map my mid to a fader, and my high to a fader. So I use faders to EQ rather than these uh, like EQs. Reason being is because uh, I don't actually have like the knobs arranged in the same fashion as what you do on a mixer. And I want to use these ones up the top for other effects. I don't want to use them for like sort of taking the lows out and then mixing in the mids and the highs. I, I don't want to use those controls for that. I would rather have like flanges or filter controls or all sorts of other stuff on there. So with that in mind, uh, what I'm able to do is I can click on that and I can go to MIDI map. I can click the low control and then I can wiggle the parameter that I'd like it to change. Can hit mid. Wiggle the mid fader, hit high, wiggle the high fader. Okay, so now they're all mapped and you can see here. So we've got um, CC7, so that's the name of the control. And it's controlling the gain of the low, the gain of the mid, and the gain of the high. And you can see the minimum value, and you can see the maximum value. And this is actually pushing the volume all the way to positive 6, which I don't want to do. And in fact, I probably don't even want it to be at 0. I want to avoid clipping at all costs. So, I'm going to set that to negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. So I can just type the value in. Cool. So then if I move out of the MIDI, and then I come back to my controls, and I pull that all the way up, and pull it all the way down, so we've got... Uh, absolute zero, so no volume, and then at max we've got negative three volume. Cool. So zero max negative three, zero max negative three. Cool. So now I'm I've got a three decibel, I've got a three decibel uh, amount of headroom. Cool. And it's not likely that I'm going to need to make that three decibels up at any point. And I'm also going to be layering tracks on top of one another. So when they're summed together, that's going to increase the volume as well. So we don't want any digital distortion at any point. So I'm always making sure that my gain staging is 
appropriate. So it's up to the mastering engineer of these tunes to get it at an optimal volume. And then I never manipulate the volume of the track. See, so if I click the track and I come in here, it's always set to zero decibels exactly as the mastering engineer uh, exported it out of, out of their project. And then, so if I turn the EQ off and I let it play at the highest intensity of the track, which is probably around here. Uh, and if I turn the volume up on the control here, uh, this is going to blast areas. So let's do it gently and play it from over here. If I set that to default, you'll notice that it's even clipping a, l a little bit over zero on the Ableton faders. Okay, so um, with that EQ on there, let's play it. Gives me a little bit more headroom and I could maybe even tap that back a little bit more. And if I wanted to be um, as safe as possible, I could put a limiter on there. Uh, and then I could also put a limiter on the master. Uh, that's if I want to get that involved. But I would rather give myself headroom um, with the EQ control. So right click on the EQ here and um, uh, the, my head's going to be in the way. So let's try and put, we'll put some stuff in here just so that we can see what I'm clicking on. Sorry. Um, so right click on this and just make sure that you set it to flat response. Okay. Cause this EQ three by default doesn't always, uh, respond in a flat way. Cool. So now we've set up our EQ and we're able to EQ that. What we'll do as well is we'll set up some filters to do some stuff. So we'll get filter one and we will, uh, then grab filter two. So we're going to have one that is going to be able to be a, a sweep from the bottom. And then we're going to have one that's a sweep from the top. Cool. Uh, or sorry, low pass, high pass is the proper way to refer to that. And uh, what we'll do is I'm going to mini map those frequency controls. Um, I could do this two ways. I could group those filters and I could send it to a macro and then control the macro and, and maybe we'll do that for this example so we mapped the eqs directly to the faders but what we'll do is we'll just do some some sort of routing with this so let's shift click i've selected everything and i can just right click and go group or i could go control g on my computer and then for this um i'll rename macro one to low pass and then i'll rename macro two to high pass Okay, so low pass, that's that one. High pass, that's that one. And we'll also map the resonance. So resonance to the low pass and resonance to the high pass. Cool. And if I grab that filter and I pull it all the way out, it's going from um, maximum frequency value, but also maximum resonance value, which I don't necessarily want. So what I want to do is I want to make some adjustments to that. So if I right click on the guy that's got the green dot, I can go into the macro map, which is this here. And then I'm able to see, okay, low pass. I can see frequency and I can see resonance. And I can see that the resonance is at 125, but I don't want it to be at 125. Actually, when it's all the way at maximum value, I kind of wanted it at like maybe 14, just like a neutral, neutral amount. I don't want to be pushing it. So that's probably more appropriate. And, um, that knob, we, we may need to come back and, and change that again once I get to the knob, but for now it's okay. So on this one, the minimum value, because this one's all the way at bottom, I want that at 14 as well. Cool. Or 15. 15 works better for my brain. <laughs> and uh, the maximum value, I absolutely do not want it anywhere near that because it'll destroy our ears. Let's say the maximum value is going to be 60. So 60 and 60. And then let's move these around. Okay, cool. So that pulls all the way shut and it pulls the resonance up as well. So that is the kind of motion that I want because what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to filter down from the highs and I want to add a little bit of resonance as I do this. So see how the resonance peaks up a bit. 
Uh, that's exactly the sort of movement that I want. But I don't need this filter to go all the way shut. I probably need it to go to somewhere around there. So let's say the um, minimum value of the low pass should be 400 or 500 hertz. So let's go 500. Cool. So when I pull it all the way shut, that's the maximum value that it's going to shut and open. Cool. So 60% of the resonance and 500 hertz. And we, we might come back and tweak that in a second. Um, and then with this guy, we don't want it to go all the way close. We probably want it to rest it around, let's say 1.5. So the um, that would be the maximum value on this one. So let's go 1500 one, uh, and then all the way up all the way down. Okay, cool. That should be appropriate for this. Um, so we may need to invert that one. It depends on what happens when we map it to the knob. So let's go into MIDI mapping. Let's select the low pass. And which knob do I want the low pass to? I've done that the other way around. I want the high pass to be mapped to... Um, so I want to sweep from high to low with this one because that's just the way my brain works and then I want to sleep from low up with that one okay so that is that one and then that is that one and I should have done it the the right way around but uh, with the controls so now I'm gonna I'm gonna play with the control okay so now that is working and that is working cool so now what I've got is I've got the, you can see the indicators of the lights. These are really cool uh, pan pots. So now if I want to sweep the top end a little bit, I can do that and go back. And if I want to sweep up the bottom, I can do that. And I just need to make sure that for the neutral uh, sound, I keep them at absolute zero. And what I can also do is I can go MIDI map and I can also map the on and off to the control as well. So map to high pass right click map to low pass right and then what i can do is i can right click on that go back into the macro map macro map so when this control is at its neutral point ideally that filter would be off okay because we don't want the filter to color the sound we only want the filter to turn on when we start to turn it okay um, and sometimes when filters filters are set at neutral points they still change the sound a bit so what i'm able to do is I can set the, which one am I controlling first off? Um, so that one is the high pass. So come in here, uh, sorry, go back, right click, go edit macro map. Um, what did I say? Did I say high pass? I think I did. So the minimum value would be off and then anything above that would be on. So um, let's see whether that works. So zero, and then one. I'm not, I'm not sure that that's going to be correct, but let's just try it out. So at the minute, that filter is off. And if I turn it, okay, it turns on. And I'm controlling the, uh, the wrong filter, unfortunately. <laughs> so let's go unmap from high pass and map to low pass. And then unmap from low pass and then map to high pass. Okay, cool. Let's do that again. So right click uh, on the green, go into there, set that to zero and set that to one. And then let's see whether that works. So, okay, so uh, I'm still a little bit silly with what I'm doing. Cool. I've done it wrong again, but that's okay. So um, this one, right click, macro map. So this one needs to be set from zero to one. And let's test that out. So on and off. Okay, so I've got it the wrong way around. So I just need to reverse it. And sorry guys, like this does take a little bit of trial and error. I can never remember off the top of my head. Um, so one to 127 is uh, hopefully the right way. Let's try that. So when it's at the bottom, one is off, and then any okay, any movement turns that filter on. But right down the bottom, it's a resting point. Cool. So that one is working right. Right click this one, edit macro map. So um, 
that may be working correctly. So let's go back out of there. Okay, so that doesn't turn on until it gets right to the bottom. So we just need to reverse that. So it needs to go 127. Um, uh, so minimum zero, maximum like 126, I believe. Yep. Cool. So that is controlling that properly. Right click, edit macro map. Cool. All right. So that's working properly. So now we've got our filters set up for that first channel and we got our EQ set up. So let's play the track and see what we can do. Cool. So we'll take the low end out. That works. We'll take the mid range. Cool. Sounds pretty hollow. My voice will fit in there nicely. And then high end. And if we wanted, we could go ahead and change the frequency at which it, that controls the low and that controls the high and all that stuff. I'm not going to do that because I don't really don't mind. It sounds good enough to me. So I'm going to turn it back up. Let's filter the lows. Cool. And then let's filter the highs. Cool. And now if we cross the filters over, does it kill the entire sound? So I'll pull that one all the way down. There's still a little bit of sound there. If you don't want that, then just make your minimum value points of where the EQ rests. So this one 500 and this one 1500. Maybe change that one to 2000 kilohertz and change that to like 400 or 300 kilohertz. And then that would uh, provide a complete cutout of the sound when you cross the filters over like that. Cool, so that is the next step, setting up your EQs. Obviously, then you'd take that one and you'd do it on the second deck as well. So I, on the ABC, I use these this th these three columns as my first deck, so to speak, and then I use these three columns as my second deck, so to speak. So I give myself like three, so uh, I've got the regular tune that starts from the beginning there. And then usually I'd have a version of the tune that would start from a different point and then a different point again. So I've got uh, the track untouched and then two key track uh, cue points. And then I have a gain on the other channel, the same duplication, the track, and then two tracks that have cue points. Cool. So that's the way that I, I've worked this out. And then I use all of this for effects. Um, and I can use a crossfader for effects as well. So I try by the end of setting this up to use absolutely everything on it. Um, so cool. Hopefully that video was interesting for you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Hi everyone. Thank you for watching my videos. If you would like some one-on-one -on -one help, I offer one-on-one -on -one tutorials over Skype. So if you think that you need a little bit of extra help, please get in touch with me. Uh, you can email me. My email will be in the link of the video description. If you would like to support the channel in other ways, jump over onto Patreon and consider becoming a patron. Uh, subscribe to me on YouTube and like my page on Facebook. Uh, and thanks again for watching my video. See you in the next one.